In the previous lesson, we recorded the script and corrected the mistakes by using Punch In. But you could also record your script with all the mistakes in them and then correct them later. And Sadaka says blood, sweat, and tears have gone into it. Literally. If you set a cue point when you make the mistake during the recording, then it's easier to locate it afterwards. He points to a thin white line on his right hand. The cue points are seen as blue arrows in the timeline. They are attached to the audio and will move when the audio is moved. When he was 15, Sadakas was sewing a button on. In this final recording, we could see the cue points. So let's say we need to correct a mistake. When he was 15, Sadaka was sewing a button on some fabric. We need to keep the correct version, so let's remove the double take. We can split at the beginning of the sentence where things first went wrong, and then again at the beginning of the sentence that we wish to keep. Select the regions in between, and use cut to remove it. When you use cut, everything from the right is dragged to the left to fill in the gap. If we play back the edit, then it sounds the way we intended. With a long needle. When he was 15, Sadaka was sewing a button on some fabric. We can also make a selection in a different way. It might be a while. It might be a while. We can drag a selection over the area we like to delete. This we do by holding the mouse down as we drag a selection. Make sure that the cursor is an eye beam. We get an in point and an out point at the ends of the selection. We can also use shortcuts to set the in and out points. I for in, O for out. You can even rehearse your edit before you actually commit to it. Having everything nearby is a district. If we're not happy with the selection, then we can move the in and out points in the timeline. Having everything nearby, that's a district. Now let's see what would happen if we use delete instead of cut. If we make the same selection as before and now press delete, then the audio is still removed, but we're left with a hole. This is not very useful right here, but now you know what happens. Let's stop up for a moment and have a look at this region. We have tried to adjust the gain and trim before, but you can also add a fade. You can fade in or fade out. The longer the fade is, the longer time it will take the audio to go from silence to full strength. This you can use to fade out in the background noise, for instance. You can also take the fade handle and drag it across to the neighbor region. This creates a crossfade. This is just for demonstrating how fades work. In reality, you don't need to add a crossfade to any of your edits. Hindenburg does it automatically, creating a smooth edit. We will learn more about editing in upcoming lessons. Please like and subscribe to the channel.